The heavily laden trucks then slowly make their way over the mountain roads to the mill. Here, the coffee is once again measured before being dropped into a water-filled holding tank that is the beginning of its transformation from fruit to the hard green bean that is eventually shipped. The coffee fruit is perishable. To protect its quality, processing should start immediately upon arrival at the mill. Processing begins here in the wet mill, so-called because of its dependence upon water to manipulate the coffee. The first step is depulping. A machine called a green separator strips and removes the skin from the ripe fruit. Unripe fruit is isolated and channeled to a different section for separate processing. The first quality coffee then passes through the chancadores, where further cleaning from the skin takes place. Also, any large first quality fruit that escaped depulping in the green separator is stripped. Smaller second quality cherries pass through whole and are separated in the next process. The coffee then enters a revolving cylinder that has an internal screw conveyor. This machine is covered with bars that have precisely graduated spacing. As the coffee flows through this equipment, called a criba, the fully depulped coffee falls between the bars and flows into the fermenting tank. Any fruit that was not depulped is passed through the cylinder and is returned to the process. This coffee will be kept apart as second and third qualities. It is essential that all of this work be done without damage to the beans. The coffee spills into fermentation tanks and is left untouched for 24 to 48 hours. During this time, bacterial enzyme activity breaks down the mucilage that covers the coffee seed's outer shell. The rate of fermentation depends upon the ambient temperature. A drop in temperature will increase fermentation time, while a rise in temperature will decrease the time. The process continues until the mucilage can be easily removed from the seed by rinsing the coffee in water. It is critical to the taste of the coffee that this process is ended at exactly the right time. If fermentation is stopped too soon, the coffee will have an unpleasant fruit taste, and if delayed too long, the seed itself will ferment and the coffee will be completely spoiled. At this mill, the decision to wash a fermentation tank full of coffee is always made by the mill manager. From the fermentation tank, the coffee is rinsed into a long, water-filled cement trough. Here it will slowly make its way downstream while being constantly agitated by paddles that are drawn through the water against the flow. The purpose of the washing channel is twofold. As well as cleaning away the decomposed mucilage, it also quality classifies the coffee. Hulls, unripe, unpeeled, and underdeveloped coffee, because of their comparatively low specific gravities, will be the first to reach the end of the washing channel, followed by intermediate qualities, with the large, dense first qualities, called primeras, flowing down last. A key employee shunts the different qualities to separate draining pools using a series of gates at the end of the channel. An experienced worker and his assistant can separate as many as five distinct qualities from one fermentation tank of coffee. The eventual quality of a coffee, both in appearance and in cup, will depend in large part on the skill of the washer. The water gradually turns from opaque to crystal clear as the mucilage is washed away. Finally, the golden colored first can be seen flowing to the draining pool, ready to be moved to the patio for sun drying. Before Lamanita's coffee is moved to the mechanical dryers, 
it spends two days spread out at a carefully uniform depth on a cement patio. The hot tropical sun of the dry season slowly heats the coffee, warming it after its washing in cold mountain water. A worker constantly turns the coffee with a wooden paddle, keeping the rate of evaporation evenly distributed throughout the coffee and forming ever-changing geometric patterns that can be hypnotic to watch. A period of sun drying not only protects the coffee from excessively rapid heating in the mechanical dryers, it also adds a definite touch of sweetness to the cup. These cylindrical drum dryers constantly rotate while warm air is blown from the center, outward through the coffee, tumbling inside each of a dryer's 12 compartments. Maintaining a constant temperature is crucial. The temperature should remain between 50 and 60 degrees centigrade. It should never be allowed to exceed 70 degrees. If the coffee is overheated or heated too quickly, it will be severely damaged. Individual furnaces are fired with either wood, bunker oil, or the inner shell of the coffee seed, called the parchment, which is saved after being peeled away in final preparation. Although the coffee remains in the dryers for approximately 36 hours, the last half hour is vitally important. The coffee needs to be reduced to 10.5% internal humidity before it is dropped from the dryers. At the end of the drying cycle, coffee loses one percentage point every 20 minutes. Removal from the dryer too soon or too late will produce coffee that will either stale quickly from excess humidity or internally crystallize from overheating. In both cases, the cup will be seriously damaged. Deciding when to stop a dryer means knowing the subtle color differences associated with different humidity levels. It takes a lot of experience as an assistant before a worker is ready to undertake this responsibility. Once it has completely cooled, the coffee is laid on plywood sheets and surrounded with canvas. After drying, the parchment coffee should be kept in silo for at least 30 days before final preparation is begun. This is called reposo. During this important resting period, the coffee's internal humidity will rise about 1%, becoming both uniform and stable. This coffee, slated to be prepared for a La Manita shipment, will lay untouched for at least 60 days. The new coffee is now ready to be tried. This is undoubtedly the most exciting time of the year. All of the work and investment made in the past year comes down to what these little beans taste like when roasted, ground, and steeped in boiling water. Samples for comparison are lightly roasted to an identical degree. In cupping, this degree of roast is best for identifying any potential problems. About two pounds of each green bean sample is examined for visual defects such as broken or discolored beans. Then a sample is tested for size composition by a process called screening. Coffee is agitated across a metal screen whose surface has been perforated with precisely machined holes of a specific size. The two resulting quantities are then weighed and the percentage above and below that particular screen size is calculated. Screening an unprepared sample from a parchment silo can be very helpful in estimating quantities of coffee available for export.